Hey, hello everybody, this is Chaos with Chaos Esports Productions, and welcome to another viewer cast. Today we're going to be looking at a ZVT submitted by Nerfed Storm, and specifically we're going to be looking, well, he asked us to take a look at his macro and scout, uh, and just basically more efficient play styles and generals. So, anyways, we are going to be looking at this TVZ, and there are a couple things that are really, really interesting about this game. Um, so, Nerf Storm is in the Bronze League. He is playing up against a Gold League player, which means he's either gone up to Goldish League with a diff different race and then abandoned the league and then got replaced as a Bronze, or, um, you know, in general, has some general game sense, because uh, he does a pretty decent job. So... We're going to talk a little bit about his macro and scouting habits, as well as some nice little things that he can do to help improve his overall build. Um, so, first of all, right off the bat, goes for the extractor ship to get out an extra drone over supplying himself. Um, I do not tend to do this uh, just because, or at least not in this order. So if you are going to over drone like that and get that one extra, usually I will build the overlord, then max out on drones, build the extractor, get the second one, and then continue on droning, cancel the extractor, yada yada. Um, basically what that does is it allows the overlord to get out in a decent amount of time so you don't have this happen. Uh, when you have all three of your larva being used at once, your larva usage throughout the early stages of the game kind of get get a little bit hairy um just because it it pops up i think it's like what once every 40 seconds i don't know something like that it's it once every like 10 15 seconds or something anyway so you're going to be going for a 15 15 uh which perfectly fine going for the 15 spawning pool now pause um in order to make sure that this build is nice and crisp um, we are going to make the recommendation right off here. So you are at 200 minerals, roughly. Um, 150 minerals is the, about the time that you want to pull a single drone off to send down to your natural. Basically what this does is by the time that drone gets there, one, you can scout, see if your opponent's trying to do any shenanigans, but that will be roughly around the time that your minerals will be up to the 300 and you can immediately plant down um, your hatchery and get that going as quickly as possible. Uh, you do hold off a little bit. You wait until 17 before you pull down. Just a little bit more inefficient uh, than had you pulled it down a little bit earlier. So, going to get guys into gas. Uh, pretty normal stuff. And basically, you're just happily letting your overlords do their scouting. So far, um, as far as scouting wise, this is usually what I do. Um, some depending on if I'm up against like a random folk, I might go ahead and send out a drone for scouting, but overall, not that big of a deal. Now, I do want to make a comment about um, the order in which you get things. So you have now built your overlord to unsupply block you, but one crucial thing that you haven't taken to, into account. Now, getting your queens out as quickly as possible as soon as your spawning pool is done is going to be really crucial to maintaining optimal macro throughout the entire game um what i tend to do is i tend to get up to um 15 or 16 supply wait on getting out any more drones once the spawning pool is finished build the uh, build your first queen and then build an overlord and then start droning again. This this gives you, um, it basically just reduces the amount of time that you have to wait for that queen um, and help you, really helps you hit all as, as many injects as possible in the early game because injects are what's going to really ramp up your production and be able to use um, a lot of the mineral problems that you have a bit later in the game. So, now, you actually opt to go for the Roach Warren before the Queen. Not recommended, period. Um, if you're going to get a Roach Warren, Roach Warren should come down... I mean, unless you're planning on doing like a Roach Rush type build, which I think this is kind of, sort of, esque that. Um, but a Roach Rush build, you tend, tend to not really even expand, and you are just going crazy on Roaches as quickly as possible. Um, so... 
not highly recommended here, but you do get a handful of lings out, and those lings just chill out at your natural. Now, from a scouting perspective, uh, you've already seen your opponent. You've come in. You've seen the barracks. So, yeah, this overlord, you want to get out there as quickly as possible. Now, you've had him doing this very strange pattern. Um, you see the command center going up on the top ground, so you know that he's expanding or pl not planning on being, like, super aggressive, whatnot, in the early game. Um, and that's really all the intel you need. Now, one thing that you can do with these couple lings, send one of them to go sit at the bottom of his ramp, or even come up, poke up here and see if there's a bunker or anything. If there's no bunker, um, you know, there's no reason why you can't just chill out here, um... I mean, it looks like you're going to be a little bit more aggressive with this, so you sh should be more than fine doing that. Um, let's see. You only built one queen in the main. Now, in, P in ZVT, I tend to go for at least three queens, if not four. Four queens is definitely optimal, because if your opponent goes for really quick hellions, then it's definitely going to be a lot easier to defend that off uh, with the more queens and less. So... Um, I would highly recommend, usually what I'll do is I'll get my first queen out while my, it usually pops out a little bit after the natural finishes. Um, okay, so you get in here with your overlord, you can see everything. But yeah, it usually gets done just before the natural finishes. You can inject, build another queen, and then send the that queen down to the bottom. And meanwhile, also build... Um, also build another queen at your natural, so that way two queens are down at your natural, and one is up in the main to inject. So, get in here with a handful of lings, all good and well, get some damage done, everything's looking pretty, pretty snazzy. Now, unfortunately, you don't really get a whole lot of damage, I don't know, you killed seven, no, you killed one worker, so obviously not, not the t most terribly efficient trade right there. Um, not sure why that turned out that bad, quite honestly. Anyways, so yeah, so you lose your overlord, you get a little bit of supply lock. Now you're building a whole bunch of units. Now, I get it that you've gone in here and you see, hey, he doesn't have a whole lot here as far as units, marines, whatever. Uh, and you want to kind of try and be aggressive to that. That's perfectly fine. Um, just be strategic about it. I mean, you just kind of send them straight across and you know, see how well this happens. What we're really interested in is how many SCVs do you kill? Um, I see three. So you just traded probably about six, seven hundred minerals worth. Eh, probably not that much. Probably, probably more like three or four hundred minerals worth for two SCVs. Not, not a good trade. Um, quite honestly, if you see this, if you see this going down, throw down a Bainley nest. Bainley nests are going to be really, really efficient against the primarily marine composition that you have. Uh, that he has so and behind this you really have you've only been getting units so your natural is not exactly saturated and you're not really mining efficiently so this is going to definitely pose a really big problem as you get up into the leagues i know you're pretty new at zerg um but that is that is something that you really really need to pay attention to um let's go ahead and speed it up a little bit because i think at this point this is kind of where you just say okay i'm going to build lots of units and then i'm just going to go attack and win um, yeah, because we're at the 10 minute mark. So, as far as macro is concerned, um, there have been several, uh, several times where you have long periods of time where you're not hitting your injects. Um, you can tell this by the, no the amount of energy on the queen. You've missed two injects worth of, um, uh, worth of energy, so you're behind two injects. Um, also, you're starting to, starting to get pretty high in minerals. Um, at this point, you kind of know where your opponent is, what he's building. Um, you're perfectly fine going ahead and taking a third. Uh, in, on this map and these spawn locations, I would recommend this one as opposed to uh, this upper third base. Um, just because it would be a little bit easier to defend. But um, with the minerals that you're, mu that you're running, you definitely want to focus on either A, getting everything saturated quicker. Because, I mean, you're at 1030. 10.30 is around the time when I have two base saturation, which is full mining, uh, minerals and gas in the main, and then at least full mining minerals and one gas at the natural. Um, so you're looking for five more drones here on your minerals and three. So you're missing eight right now. 
uh, but you've been on this amount of drones for a pretty long period of time. Okay, so hotkey-wise, um, this setup is okay. Um, one thing that I highly recommend is having all of your hatcheries on one hotkey. Um, my guess is what you probably did this for is so you could double tap between the two and get between bases. Um, but that can easily be done by setting up location hotkeys. Um, if you go into your settings, you can actually like, um, you can change how those are, but I have it so that shift F1, shift F2, shift F3, and shift F4, uh, will add those location hotkeys to my function key. So I just set up the, um, the main and the natural so I can sit here and hit F2 and F3 and go between them without having to necessarily double tap the, um, oop, without having to double tap the hotkeys that you've bound to them. Um, what this does is this allows you to be able to get access to all of the larva from all of the hatcheries at one p point by just clicking one button, um, which I find to be a lot more useful as far when it, in terms of macro. Um, let's see, I do have a video on location hotkeys. If you want to just go back, I'm sure you can find it in the videos. I'll probably have it at least in the, uh, the description. Um, I might even throw an annotation up here so you can go back and check that out. Take a look at that, but you're gonna come in here with lots of units and pretty much overrun him at this point. Upgrades wise, I think, yeah, you got plus one, you can get there. Uh, the CVs aren't really doing that hot. And basically, at this point, yeah, you've kind of you've kind of won. So, to, to kind of recap the two main topics that you want me to talk about, as far as macro is concerned, make sure. You are going between your bases, hitting the oh, injects, yes. and you're down. You're now down four injects from each uh, from each of your queens. Actually, this guy's down almost six. So make sure that you're hitting those injects. That is going to be the key to getting your macro up and getting things going. And then as far as scouting, um, you did an okay job in the beginning. Uh, your overlord came in. You saw that he was expanding and things like that. But you immediately lost the over. Like you sent him in this strange pattern. Um, you've got one overlord down here. Since when you don't scout your opponent with it, and you n now know where your opponent is, send that overlord to like the back of his natural. That way, it can poke in and kind of check in on how things are going. And then, as far as this, um, the overlord that died over here, um, once you've gone in and checked him, send the overlord um, to the nearest way away from, so you don't get picked off by a marine, and then have him go around to kind of the back of your opponent's base. This gives you an opportune um, overlord to get in there and really scout when you need to. Uh, it will definitely be a lot more prevalent as you get into Silver and Gold League just to get in and really s figure out what your opponent's doing. So I think that's really all I've got. Let me know if you've got any questions. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer those down in the comment section below. Um, also, if you are not Mr. Nerfed Storm uh, and did enjoy the video, go ahead and hit that like button and share with your friends in Facebook and Twitter if you found it helpful and any of your friends could help benefit from it. So um, I think that's all I've got. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, Feel free to hit that subscribe button, and that is it. So I will see you guys in the next game.